The Stars get the response they were looking for and topple the Rangers 6-3. to Well, the new line combination stay together, and the Mike Madano statue is finally here. Let's talk about it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Be sure to subscribe and never miss an episode. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Bing bong, Stars fans. The Dallas Stars take down the Rangers 6-3 to after giving up the first two goals, a complete 180 from their Saturday night loss against Colorado, and they do it against a very stingy New York team that was rolling. They had an 11-game point streak going, and uh, they really shut down the Rangers for, I would say, the majority of the contest, about half of it, and uh, they got the job done, and uh, a big full two points heading into their next contest against Vegas on Wednesday night. We'll touch on that. The new line combinations, did it unlock some people? Did it not work? Uh, What were your thoughts on that? And of course, the big announcement from the Stars during the second period yesterday, Mike Madonna's statue is here, folks. He will go and be forever immortalized on PNC Plaza next to Dirk Nowinski, which is so exciting. It's been a long time coming. I'll give some of my thoughts on that as well. But first, Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So the Stars give up the first two goals in the game, but able to come roaring back. They score five third period goals, albeit there was a few empty netters in there. They counted as shorthanded goals. The Stars now have five shorthanded goals uh, throughout the season, which is uh, pretty remarkable. And, of course, New York pulled the goalie. Shesterkin was out of the nets, and they were just hoping to find some offense. So the Stars padded the stats there as Sam Steele and Rope Hintz both picked up some empty net goals. But it was it was great to see them not, I guess you could say, cower after giving up the first couple off some really freakish bounces. Wedgwood was really, really good. Great, great start from Scott Wedgwood. He gets 30 saves on the night. He's been very good in his last three starts. Uh, another win for the wedge wall. And uh, he really battled against Shesterkin, who, of course, is one of the best netminders in all the National Hockey League. Uh, and uh, he went toe-to-toe with them. And as the Stars really kind of worked their way into their game. I would say it was not the hottest of starts, but they weren't playing atrocious by any means. And then you get a couple of caroms, a couple of weird bounces that go uh, the way of New York and they pot a couple of goals. Um, And it was great to see the stars just, respond immediately to the goal from Jamie Ben was huge. Not even a minute later after uh, the second goal for New York, a beautiful tic-tac-toe play from Ben Pavelski and hence to get the scoring started uh, with about five minutes to go in the second period. And the stars just picked up where they left off in the third. You could see New York did not really have their legs and the stars were starting to play their game. They were winning the transition battle. They were forcing New York into some zero sum or negative plays, you could say, uh, and then went downhill, got bodies in front of the net, uh, and they produced really, really well off the rush. It created rebounds, and they just won those net front battles. It, it kind of seems to be a theme so far this year. They're just winning those gritty battles in front, and it kind of just felt like one of those gritty, grimy games where not everything was pretty besides the Stars' first goal. I mean, the game-winning goal from Sagan is just a net mouth scramble. Excellent work from Marchment, just willing his way in front of the crease. Uh, and uh, Sagan's able to get it through the legs of Shesterkin. Marchment with a great goal on the power play, not giving up on the play, even though the puck's loose right by Shesterkin in front of him. He whacks it home. I thought they were going to take that goal away. I could not believe it, fortunately. A great coach's challenge from uh, from Pete DeBoer in the Stars. He mentioned it was not a good challenge on Saturday uh, in the Colorado game. This time, 
all the bounces and I guess all the things that could have gone wrong did not go wrong for the stars. You talked about you have to limit those mistakes against high quality teams, and they limited a lot of those mistakes here uh, against New York last night, and it paid off in a big way. Great to see the offense uh, just kind of finding themselves again. Uh, some guys awoke finally, which was great. Rope a hints with a three-point night. He was my shooting star pick. I talked about it. He had not had a multi-point night game since November the 2nd against Edmonton, and he only had two points in his last seven games. They needed him uh, to find his touch again. Uh, big three points from him. Marchment with two points. Uh, Pavelski with a couple uh, of points as well. Of course, he has a beautiful goal uh, on the rebound that was produced by a Haskin and shot. Pavelski buried it, uh, which, of course, tied the game. And then it was uh, pretty much all stars from there. Ryan Suter, I thought, played a very, very excellent game. Uh, for, for the most part, it was a pretty clean game. I, they didn't give up a ton of great A chances. I mean, Kreider all alone early in the third period is one that came to mind. There was a few on a couple of rushes. Uh, we're, we're, uh, New York had a couple of clean looks, but, uh, for the most part, I thought they had bodies in front and they really limited kind of the, the slot area, uh, which, which is huge against a team that was rolling. I mean, 11 game point streak heading in Panarin is just all over the place. Uh, and they kind of shut down Panarin for the most part in some of their big boys, uh, which had, to, had a lot to do with it. Uh, and I thought it was just a really well, smartly played hockey game. Did not try to do too much. I thought they just kind of gritted this one out. They they got into their game late uh, or a little bit later than they would have liked. And uh, I, I thought they, they really produced a, a solid game. 27 scoring chances. Uh, that was uh, 23 at 5 on 5. They had 32 total. Uh, a great PK once again. I mean, this is a stellar, stellar power play unit, second best in the National Hockey League. They were rocking at 33%, and you limit it, and you limit them to the one goal. You had to kill one kind of late when it was five to three. Uh, who knows if they score there, or I think it was four to two uh, when Dodonov went to the box with the holding penalty, and they buck up. I, they put their big boy boots on, uh, and they get the kill there. Uh, which uh, really, really helped them solidify the win. I thought the PK was great. I mean, they just won draws too, which was so, so important. They got some great uh, face-off uh, wins from Sam Steele and that. Uh, Foxa, once again, Lindell and Hockenpah, five minutes of PK time. Rope Hints played a lot too, as, as well as Radic Foxa. They both had over two minutes of power play time, but uh, some great nights from a, a lot of great people. I mean, Wedgwood is probably the unsung hero that we're not really talking about, uh, but <laughs> 30 saves for him. He was just excellent. Uh, and he's exactly what a backup goaltender needs to do. He comes in and he just, he, he just shuts an opponent down and gives you a chance to win. Uh, and the stars needed some help early on. Uh, and then they figured it out down the stretch, which was a, a great sign. Um, Joel Hanley, again, just continues to play hard minutes, not giving up chances, uh, not, uh, allowing a whole lot, uh, which is a, a great sign. The Duchesne Sagan March, the, the, the machine gun line is, is phenomenal as of right now. They're the top line, uh, for the Dallas stars. They have another big night. They just continue to force their will on opponents, and they just create so many chances. They have a great combination of speed and physicality, and Duchesne's the driver of the line. Marchment has continued to get better and better recently. He drew a penalty uh, in the game as well. He had nine scoring chances himself. Duchesne with 10. Uh, they just play such good minutes, and uh, when they have when they're on the ice, they just seem to have the puck on their stick and they're playing in the offensive zone uh, the majority uh, of time. Uh, the new line combinations, it wasn't a whole change. We're going to touch on it a bit more and maybe Pete DeBoer wants to stay uh, with some of those lines. He flip flop Robertson and Ben. How is that going to work moving forward? Uh, ben looked, I thought looked really, really good with Pavelski uh, and, and hence. So maybe that is something that, uh, uh, you know, they, they stay with moving forward. That line actually in general did not play a whole lot, uh, all three of them, uh, cause hence played the majority or played the majority on the PK. So he had about a minute more than Pavelski and Ben, but they were effective and it's, 
not all about playing 15 minutes a night. And with the Stars structure and the amount of veterans they have and some of these older guys, and DeBoer's already touched on with names like Ryan Suter, it's about limiting those minutes and trying to be just as productive. Uh, and uh, they were very, very productive on the night. Rope hints with a, a big night, just taking a look at some of the hockey stat cards, uh, which uh, is always a great indicator. Tyler Sagan uh, with a very, very good night. Of course, he gets the game-winning goal, uh, and he just seemed to be in and around creating chances. Uh, I just, I, I thought it was a, a pretty, pretty just solid game. I, it just kind of felt like the meter was here. You know, halfway through, I was almost getting nervous. I was like, they're not going to score, are they? Shesterkin seems to be lights out with the chances they did get, but they were able to bludgeon some pucks through and New York kind of got flat footed and just were not as active uh, uh, in in a lot of what they were doing. They just could not connect some passes through neutral ice. I think the stars did a great job of kind of winning in between the blue lines uh, and not letting New York gain some speed and kind of win that possession slash transition battle, which I touched on yesterday was going to be huge in this one against a team that wants to roll downhill. Uh, they got some great speed, incredible playmakers, and they're not afraid to get nosy in front. AKA Chris Kreider who had a plethora of opportunities <laughs> in this one too. They were probably fortunate to not give up a, a goal from Chris Kreider, uh, at least keep him off the score sheet. They kept the big boys off the score sheet. If you do that on most nights uh, against most teams, you're going to win the majority uh, of your games. That's just the way it is. It's a great combination of goaltending and getting some timely scoring. Uh, great to see them put up six. Uh, it was a complete 180. They lost six to three. They went six to three. Just scored five unanswered. Uh, but it was kind of fitting that uh, New York scored late, and it was the same result as Saturday night. So good things moving forward into Vegas. Speaking of moving forward, what about these new line combinations? Did you like them? Are they here to stay? I'll give you my thoughts on the new trios in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is obsessed with finding you tickets and having a complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal with hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. We've all been there, folks. You're going to a contest, let's say away from the AAC. You're on the road, a little trip. Hey, I'm going to go catch a game. I'm in town. Why not? It's not too bad. You buy a ticket. Next thing you know, you go down in your seat. There's a pull. There's a rambling. I wouldn't have bought these tickets if I knew this was going to be the view. And that's why game time is awesome. You can see the view from your seats before you even buy them. So you know you're not going to have any of those issues. You can take all the guesswork out of game time. Download the game time app, folks. Create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D E D. O-N-N-H-L. That's Locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time but today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. So the Stars roll out some new line combinations and we did not get a lot of heads up about this. Pete DeBoer was being sly and next thing you know in warm-ups Jamie Benn and Jason Robertson were flip-flopped. Uh, and I don't know if I'm too keen on them staying that way. If DeBoer just wanted to experiment and trying to unlock some guys, because uh, to be honest, he's probably trying to unlock a little bit more out of Jason Robertson, uh, which I completely understand. He's not scoring at the pace he would certainly not like or what we've been accustomed to seeing, but it's almost a weird debacle too where or a weird situation because yeah Jason Robertson hasn't been great uh Rope Hints really hasn't been all that consistent as well at least in the last week or so of course he has a big three point night but we're, we're saying this and the caveat is they're 
the top scores on the team. Robertson was tied entering the contest with 15 points. <laughs> so uh, can you really be that upset? Yeah, you, you want him to, to score a bit more. And if he is, it's certainly going to help. But uh, it, sometimes it, it feels a li little bit ticky tacky to be complaining uh, about some of those. And, and Robertson, yeah, is, is not finding his spots. And maybe it's partially due to, to opponents game planning for him. Uh, they know he can score from anywhere, anytime. You just got to get a stick on puck. He's not the most fluid or gifted skaters. We know that too. Um, but it seems to have never slowed him down. He's always been able uh, to find pay dirt, just not quite at the rate that we're used to seeing. Jamie Ben with Pavelski and uh, Johnston, excuse me, or Pavelski and Hint, sorry, was really, really effective. I thought that trio uh, was great. Of course, they got the stars on the board right away. Uh, maybe it just was some lightning in the bottle. I don't know how that fits going forward. I I, I don't really have a, a whole lot of criticize, criticisms or concerns moving forward because I feel like Pete DeBoer just pushes the right buttons. He knows his club. It's the first time we've seen that top line be broken up in seasons too, by the way. Uh, that was kind of wild. Uh, of course, when Hints is out, that's different. But this is everybody's healthy. Um, of course, you're not going to break up the machine gun line. Uh, but I, I thought Johnston, Dodonov, and Robertson were effective in stretches. But really, who caught my eye the most was Johnston. <laughs> and I thought Dodonov, that pair, uh, was probably the the better of the, the trio. They just seemed to be uh, a little bit more in sync, which is not too surprising. They've been playing together for uh, a while now. And, and Robertson, of course, jumped into the fray. Uh, but I, I think it provides a, a little different character. You add a bit more of a goal scoring touch to that line with Johnston. And then you add a little bit more brute physicality uh, with the Pavelski line. So either way, I think it, it, it works. My gut is that it doesn't stay this way in the big picture, in the immediate future, uh, future, I think it might for like four to five games here in this next stretch. DeBoer doesn't like to change a lot of things around, especially winning lineup. Uh, I mean, I, I think it may stay in the immediate future against Vegas. And then you have the flames coming to town. Uh, does it stay in a week? I don't know. It, it's really hard to break up that top line. That has been one of the best in, in all uh, of hockey here in recent seasons, not off to a, a great, a roaring start, I would say. But again, the caveat is all three of them are in the top five uh, now of scoring for the Dallas Stars. So it, it, it's hard to uh, it, it's hard to argue against it for sure. But um, I thought it added a, d a different layer, and the offense awoke against a very stingy New York team. Look, uh, they were only allowing two point two goals. Per game that was second in the NHL. Igor Shosturkin is probably going to be a Vesna finalist at the end of the year. Um, and they outdueled them. Uh, they got what they needed. Uh, a great bounce back, five third period goals, a couple shorties, too. Uh, and it was uh it was great to see uh, the Dallas Stars get a win against a very, very good hockey team. They've been beaten up on some of the opponents that, of course, you should beat. Had not had that really quality win quite yet. Should have had it against Colorado. Unable to shut it down. A few days later, they get what they were looking for. And uh, I, I love to see the fight, even after trailing. Look, they can give up two and just go away. They could have gone away and said, well, bounces aren't going our way tonight, boys. We're, we're done for. But uh, they they went to work. They uh, tightened the laces, pulled up the bootstraps, and... Uh, uh, they got it done, uh, which was uh, a, a great sign uh, for Stars fans. So they continue to hold their top spot in the Central Division, the first place Dallas Stars, as the Avalanche fell to the Predators last night by a final score of 4-3. to three. So the Stars trying to lengthen that gap. But they have the best team in the Western Conference Coming on Wednesday night. A big game on national TV too. They got the TNT time slot. Uh, Vegas versus Dallas Stars. Another Western Conference Finals rematch. Of course, the Stars lost in a shootout last time out. Should be a fun one. But before 
we go. Let's talk a bit about Mike Madano. The new statue is coming. It's been a long time coming. I'll give you my thoughts. I want to hear yours as well in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Before we jump into some of the uh, Mike Madano statue talk, I want to give you an update as well. I've touched on it a bit, but Locked On has a launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top stories of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Some great stuff uh, coming out of Locked On Sports. Want to thank all the everydayers here on Locked On Stars. Be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe. Uh, never miss an episode. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. By the way, happy Thanksgiving. I'll say it throughout the week. Uh, with the schedule coming up, I'm not for certain on what days I'm going to have episodes. Uh, I have a weird schedule, too, with the team I'm covering. I have a game on Wednesday. Usually, it's a weekend thing. I have a game on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday I have to cover, which is unfortunate with the schedule the Stars have because they play on Wednesday. It's going to be really weird. Uh, I want to try to do an episode on Thursday or Friday. There's going to be no promises to that. <laughs> uh, but I I'm going to try to get one out on Thursday or Friday. I may not with me traveling a bit for Thanksgiving and just all the stuff going on. It's going to be a hectic week, but uh, I will do my best because uh, I'm going to watch the games. I want to, I want to talk about it uh, and give some information. Anyways, Mike Madano, the best player in franchise history is finally going to be immortalized in bronze. Dirk Nevinci is going to have a partner out front of the AAC at PNC Plaza uh, and a statue will be unveiled on March 6th which is very, very exciting. It was a long time coming, uh, and it feels it feels so right. Uh, it was great to see Mike Madano in the building. Of course, he had an interview with Razor during the second period, and look, it, it, this should have happened a long time ago. It probably should have happened before Dirk. What was it? Four years, I think, after Dirk's final game, they got one. It's been a while since, of course, Mike Madonna retired. And look, there were some things, I'm sure, with ownership. And Madonna, of course, is now in the front office of Minnesota. But hockey would have not have thrived in Dallas without him. Plain and simple. Mike Madonna is Dallas Stars hockey at the end of the day. Uh, it's just, it's kind of what it is. I was born in 99. The amount of kids that was wearing number nine growing up when I was playing hockey is astronomical. Talk about a number that was fought over by every kid in the Metroplex was number nine most of the time. Everybody wanted to wear it. Uh, he just had such a, a big influence, the stuff he did for uh, the community, uh, and of course, just the impact he had. I, I mean, 20 seasons, brings the Stanley Cup in 99, Hockey Hall of Fame, just under 1,500 games. Thanks, Mac, uh, Mike Babcock, for that one with the healthy scratches. <laughs> but uh, he leads the franchise in goals, assists. Uh, a U.S. born, he, he leads all U.S. born scores. Uh, some of the numbers for you too, just to, just to remind you in case uh, you forgot. Uh, but uh, 700, uh, or excuse me, 813 assists, 561 goals is good for just over 1,300 points, uh, and he still leads in that category. Uh, just did so much for the game and it, it just feels right. I'm, I'm so excited about it. It just, uh, it was a long time coming and, uh, I can't wait to see what they came up with. It's the same artist 
that created the Dirk one. I'm sure it will be just phenomenal, and it it'll, it'll be awesome uh, to see that statue unveiled. And I can't wait to go uh, see it in person. I would love to see uh, your uh, your reactions to it. Are you a bit upset with the timing? Are you maybe not as excited because it was so delayed? Um, you know, I think it, who cares at the end of the day, it, it just, it just seems right. It should be done. <laughs> um, whether the politics of, of the thing matter at all, it, it really doesn't. Who cares what organization he's working with? Um, the, the, the fan base loves him. Um, and, uh, I, I think he'll take a lot of appreciation for it, which is, uh, uh, which, which will be awesome. So can't wait to see that. Mike Madano finally immortalized as a Dallas star, much deservedly as well for uh, for all he did. So I, I'm just really, really excited about that and could not have happened on a better night. A great announcement, a great night. <laughs> Stars take down the Rangers uh, by a final score of six to three. So thank you as always for joining me uh, and your engagement and uh, your willingness to have conversation in the comments. Uh, I love the, the healthy debate that occurs down there. I enjoy popping every popping in every once in a while and uh, chatting it up with you guys as well. Um, a good win, a good win. Let's try to take down the Vegas Golden Knights. Why not? I'll have an episode for you tomorrow uh, as well, so uh, be on the lookout for that national primetime game. This is the first one. I guess it's kind of the second because they play Columbus on the ESPN Hockey Night. Um, so uh, let's get the job done against Vegas, and we'll move on from there. Uh, enjoy a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I hope everybody's just enjoying relaxing. You're probably off of work. Maybe today, maybe not. I don't know, but uh, hopefully it'll be a chillax week. We will be in touch as always. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on the Twitter thing at joy, the jet 19 and I will talk to you tomorrow. So long stars fans.